All right, here we are again. Sherlock Holmes, Chapter 1. And it's been a while, so I can't really remember where I left off, so... M for mystery. Uh, Lucky Joe is locked up, but the Black Mountain Shores have been stolen. Um, all right, the hotel, room 227. Yeah, we remember that. Now it's splitting the loot, and... I believe Mother's Love is stalled behind more of the furniture. Okay, so we're at the police. Um, so do we go back to the hotel? Oh. Now the art trader has something for me. Before he didn't. All right, let's go there. Buy some art and visit the hotel. See if we can... Get into Moriarty's room now. Art trader? Is that you? You don't look like an art trader. Um. What? The finest clothes for the finest people on the island. Oh, he's on the other side of the intersection. Landscapes and portraits. Find the one that your house is like. My goods will brighten up your <clears> house. <throat> Greetings. Um, you just have a portrait of my family. Okay. Um, map of London. Smaller than the actual city. Well, I certainly hope so. Violet's portrait. Sketch of a boy. Well, I think we have to get the picture of Mom before we get the other two. <laughs> Seems like it would be <laughs> downright wrong not to. Alright, the hotel is up there, if I remember. Extra, extra. Uh, Robin's fine. Interested in some Cordona news? Not particularly, but I will anyway. Check the front page. You won't regret it. You say so. Um, yeah, it's up here. <clears throat> and we're sprinting and we're sprinting and we're sprinting. <clears throat> okay, I can't get in here. What is the point of giving me clues? Oh, is this the press? No. Is that you, Mr. Holmes? Please, come in. Now that the police have finished their investigation, Il Palazzo del Lusso has finally okay. reopened. Great, then let's go see if we can get into Moriarty's room. Oranges. Is this here? Hello there. How can I help you, sir? Yeah, give me a key. Good day. I'm looking for room 227. An acquaintance of mine has invited me to visit him. Oh, Mr. Holmes, what a delight to see you again. Professor Malice told me he was expecting someone, but I didn't know it would be you. 227 is upstairs and to the left. He said you should spare him the trouble and let yourself in. Here's the key. I'm sure he'll be thrilled to see you. Professor Malice. Yes. Yes, of course. Well, I'd best not keep him waiting. Thank you. Professor Malice, huh? Latin for evil. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta mute that email notification. Otherwise, it's just, it's just gonna keep happening, so... 227. Oh, that's actually going to be on the other side. As I recall. Here's 225. I believe this is 226. 227. J 
just so happens to be right next to the scene of the crime. John, you gotta stop doing that. Wow, what a shit room. Um, okay. Wine. Wine with a champagne flute. That's not a champagne bottle. Um, clock. Correspondence. Book. Steamer trunk. Chair pulled out. Why would this couch possibly be at an angle? A clean champagne flute. And only one of them. Is it here just for me? The champagne bottle is uncorked, yet still chilled and bubbly. The gall of this man. So it is Someone meant to be champagne. A victory. And I'm not sure it's us. Anglo-Egyptian war looms. And chessboard with the pawn moved forward. The first move has been made. M is celebrating and wants us to know it. I mean, I don't blame him. I don't know much about chess. I know that chess is a... Not, I mean, it's obviously not the newest big thing, but I mean, I know that it's popular right now. It's it's uh, seeing a new renaissance, a resurgence in popularity, let's say, thanks to things like the Queen's Gambit. Um, I don't know... I don't know enough about the game to know if there is a name to that opening, although I do know enough about the game to know that there probably is a name for that opening. Um, um, but, you know, I also don't know its significance. Let's right, see what we got here. The position of naval forces in the Mediterranean. This M has his sights set on bigger things. Okay, but those positions don't make a lot of sense. The position of naval forces in the Mediterranean. This M has his sights set on bigger things. Yeah, see, he's got the pins showing where the forces are most likely at whatever time this is. But if you look at the lines showing movement of territories and soldiers, it's gibberish. To me, anyway. Here's the first agent. Look, hit by the uh, did orchestrate her accident with unimaginable precision. Yep. And then the guy who jumped off the bridge. Jacob Herring, just a pawn in a oh, no. complex chess match. It's supposed to be Jacob Herring, okay. And an area of Cordona near the police station. A marked map of Cordona. We visited most of these locations recently. All these thefts, exactions, and deaths are the Intricately entwined pieces of a greater plan, and we fail to influence it in the slightest. Oh, don't beat yourself up that much. It's contrived enough that it's impossible to... Alright. I, I, I am enjoying this game. At least parts of it so far. Um, and I believe that the Moriarty missions are a DLC, I think. Um, either way... The Moriarty missions have been extremely disappointing so far. I understand that the whole point of the character of Moriarty is to act as a foil to Sherlock, to be his intellectual equal, or perhaps even greater, um, to the point where Sherlock must exhaust all of his mental faculties and his abilities as an investigator in order to bring him down. I understand that. Um, but there is a, it's a, that is a really difficult thing to write. Um, and the stories in the Moriarty missions, in order to achieve that level of brilliance, um, rely entirely on contrivances. Um, so for example, here we are in room 227 of the hotel. 
Um, and we are to believe that this is where Moriarty has staged a scene for us, explaining that he has been meticulously planning and with exacting precision um, presenting clues to Shakespeare and committing these crimes. Take the crime of the agent who got hit by the rickshaw, okay? Um, I was accepting uh, that, you know, uh, that that was certainly possible. I was willing to suspend disbelief. The series of events, the flower pot falling, the rickshaw coming down at extra speed, um, and all of that, um, and then the, the person coming in and, and breaking in and taking things, although not being skilled enough to pick locks or not cut themselves on the thing or whatever, doesn't really seem like a Moriarty crime. I mean, certainly using agents in order to do that, but Moriarty would pick a more competent agent, and there was no reason for Moriarty to choose the exact moment of her death in order to do that. I mean, if he's supposed to be smart, he would have found a smarter way to do that. But again, I was fine with that. I was willing to accept it. Not, not that big of a deal. But when we got to Herring, Moriarty going there, presumably to have tea, just prior to this person uh, who he has extorted into breaking in and stealing the, the stuff, and then picking his pocket and taking the documents elsewhere. Too many contrivances. And the almost the dumbest way really to commit that particular crime there's no chance that the moriarty that i'm familiar with from literature and even sherlock is agreeing with me here um would ever do something like that you know there's just just pointless too there's too too yeah too many contrivances and too many pointless risks it really doesn't make any sense but i i understand that they're trying to create a larger villain so i'm just saying that if if you do like the story. If you, if you like Sherlock and Moriarty as characters, um, this is not my, what, what, in my experience, this is the uh, stories are like. Alright, picture I am watching you. Nelson's Monument in Trafalgar Square, London. I am watching you. The hairs on my neck just stood up. Oh, John, get over it. Dear Mr. Holmes, I must apologize for not being here to greet you. I waited for quite some time, but perhaps I overestimated your abilities. Alas, I have urgent matters to attend to overseas, and I can delay my departure no longer. As such, I'm afraid I simply do not have time to pack up all my things. Perhaps you can take a good look around for me and see if there's anything of note. I'd be in your debt, and I'm already thinking about how to repay you. Must run, M. And so if Sherlock Holmes, being the brilliant detective that he is, he knows that this entire scene is staged, uh, that he's dealing with his intellectual equal and so on, uh, then why would he continue to investigate this scene? Everything here is merely put in Sherlock's place, and he's already under the knowledge that this is, well, what did it say, baiting him. That I failed, John. He's gone, tore through Cordona like a hurricane and left us to sift through the wreckage. These are the documents from the safe. General Gar Garrett or Garnet Wolseley. A dossier on General Garnet Wolseley, but now empty. I recognize this seal from Jacob Haring's mail. <laughs> Extensive handwritten notes on Sirius B. It appears M was studying up. He left behind only what he wanted us to find infuriating. A family photo of the man who jumped off the bridge. Pity. Uh, look at the wife's eyes looking up and down. <laughs> well, that's weird. Uh, I like how they all look photorealistic except for the NPC guy. <laughs> Everybody has pressure points. What would happen if I pushed yours? Daniel Wellington has a wealthy nobleman, or was a wealthy nobleman, and arrived on Cordon at the very beginning of the Silver Rush of 1818. 
He funneled all of his money into mining and earned himself a fortune in return. Daniel had four sons, all infamous for their spoiled behavior and ability to pay their way out of any crime, including bludgeoning a man nearly to death and setting a bar on fire. Daniel Wellington died in 1859 at the age of 67, and his inheritance passed to his eldest son, Tom. Tom Wellington was not nearly as smart at business as his father. Every new financial investment failed, but with the mining business still profitable, the family were insulated until 1862. The mines were exhausted. Some say the Wellington family went into bankruptcy in 1866, but the true collapse happened earlier in 1863 when Tom Wellington committed suicide. His wife and seven-year-old son, Reginald, were left with a debt, and his unsympathetic brothers offered no respite. The miners demanded payment, vandalizing the Wellington mansion and threatening worse. The family sold their estate to pay off the debt, then disappeared, but even now the family has a lot of enemies on the island. Okay. How many more dossiers like this does M possess? <laughs> Mysteries of Sirius B by Jacob Haring. Used, then discarded. Like everyone in his path. These people were not colleagues or co-conspirators. They were just implements M used to get what he wanted. Yeah, no shit. <clears throat> no shit, Sherlock. Uh... Too late, Sherry. M set this all up for us, knowing by the time we found it, he would already have left Cordona. No, no, there must be something I've missed. We can still catch him. There's nothing else here. It's over. You read his letter. He laid out this makeshift museum to taunt you. Don't give him the satisfaction. I will not cede defeat. I will treat this threat with the seriousness it deserves, which is to say, my absolute attention. Then you were giving him the win, Sherlock. Have you considered you might be out of your depth? He was sitting here, in this very room, spinning his web around Cordona and beyond. Manipulating and murdering people, using the Mediterranean as his playground like some sodding Napoleon of crime. Are you trying to suggest? I am not suggesting. I am stating outright that he is toying with you and you are too arrogant to avoid the bait. Sherlock, we stumbled into the lion's den. Now we must slow down. Be smart, and make sure we get to walk out alive. I mean, you have a point. So what do you suggest? I know you want to catch him on your own, but it's time to face the facts. You lost. The smartest thing we can do now is lick our wounds and tell Mycroft everything. Mycroft? Now you are being hysterical. Look around you, Sherry. He's stealing secrets from the Crown, toying with navies, fermenting war. You cannot catch him alone. We will need all your brother's connections to stop this madman before he does worse. Um, yes, you should tell Mycroft. Perhaps you're right. But you should do he it could secretly, be anywhere in Europe, because Moriarty and the only can be assumed to, is with to have confederates. I shall endeavour to tell my brother the whole story as soon as I can stomach another humiliation. Good. Thank you. And it is not humiliation, it is humility. For now, we need to put this wretched affair behind us. M has gone. Best to focus on the reason we came to Gordona in the first place. You're right. I'm glad you were here. I'm always looking out for you, brother. Thank you, John. Now, shall we? Um, that's it. Okay. Um. I don't remember this at all, but okay. I must have picked it up last time. All right, well, that's a... I guess maybe I should not have done the correct thing and told Mycroft. <laughs> or or something. Um, 
but that seems to be the end of that. Um, I guess maybe I should have been more hard-headed and done the wrong thing. Um, because uh, then it would have continued the story. I don't know. Let's see. Um, well, we've got these Child of Cordona things. It says that one's in the police station, and that's pretty close by. I mean, pretty close to the fast travel point. Let's get rid of that. Um, I need money. I have a little bit more. Don't think it's enough to buy all of the art. What's this? Okay. Oh, I thought I got this coin. I thought I got it. Apparently not. Alright, here's my plan then, I guess. I'm going to fast travel to the theater. I'm going to see if I missed this coin. And then go to the police station and do a uh, Child of Cordona. This one. And then we will head to Silverton and do a side quest. Up here in Engineer's Lane, that's where the uh, where the clues pointed us to last time. Trouble here? No, I have to actually leave this zone. And yep. Yeah, I totally did get this one. This is the one in the tree. Isn't it? I swear the clue was there. And I swear I got this one. Um, yeah, this is the one with the back entrance thing. Yeah, I did this one. I, come on, I'm stuck on the fucking wall. Ah. Yeah, this is the one... Uh, oh, hold on. Now I'm turning around. Yeah, right, uh, right here. And the toy boat. Can I ask you a question? Unfortunately, my casebook is empty on this. Uh, yeah, here's the boat. What the hell? <sighs> I was here before the lockdown. Oh, yeah, Sokova. Sokova. Okay, um, and now it's gone. Bug, I guess. Um, starting the archive room.
Okay. Are you able to help me? I wish I could help you, but I don't know. Started in the place. Okay, I don't know what I'm supposed to do then. Um. Um. Rick Gentiles. Okay, so. District Miner's End. Evidence. Pattern. Okay. Oh, hello. What the? Okay, I should probably read the thing, huh? <clears throat> So I have to concentrate. Oh, photographs. Okay. Um, so I am concentrating very hard on this. It's got the book icon, so it's got to be research. It's got to be. Miner's End. Complaints. Matthias, known crimes, pickpocketing, minor vandalism, loitering, begging, petty theft, murder. Okay. After close inspection of Mr. Wright's hiding place, we found the stolen uniform. The kid claimed that he took it as a joke after it was left unattended at the Garden of Delights. We recommended a small fine and a week of obligatory work at the port, but the chief inspector elected to handle the case personally. Officer Placido, who's now Chief Inspector Placido. Interrogation note, after a thorough questioning, subject confessed that he stole my uniform on purpose and that he was going to deliver it to his known criminal associates, the Hive. Subject further confessed to the murder of journalist Hector Jacobson. Typical behavior from fatherless scum. Disappeared from his cell. No, this can't be right, Matthias. Murder? Impossible. No, he was Good thing definitely we helped framed escape. for it. Now focus, Sherry. Let's remember how we did it. 
We snuck in when the archives were empty and found something on the archivist's table. A top secret map of catacombs beneath the prison, allowing us to rescue Matthias. No, no, that's not right. It was something else. Let me focus on it. Ah, of course. It was the shift schedule. We wanted to know which officer was on prison duty that day. Ah, oh, that's not how I remember it. Or maybe... Yes. We went to find the officer's desk. That's where the map was. Officer's desk across the hall. Why are you... Okay, I don't know why you're standing like that. Doesn't seem to be in here. Maybe it's the bullpen across the hall. We waited until no one was around, then searched the desk. You were on lookout, John. Do you recall what we found here? I remember a book with wax stains damaged by humidity. The officer used it to keep him company during long prison shifts. A half-eaten tuna sandwich, it was carefully wrapped in a hand-stitched kerchief. You almost took a bite, John. Keys. There was a chain of keys. We found something here, John, and something else. Weapon. It was a police billy club, new, but already stained with blood. What's important is that we found keys. By my memory, we crept to the prison cells immediately. Let's go. Okay. Is it back this way? Oh, indeed it is. Not there. Not there. Oh, what a long day. Many police officers have the sympathetic trait. Or maybe that's because I'm dressed as a police officer. Yeah, it must be because I'm dressed as a police officer. There it is. Guards were lazy. Knowing their shift schedule, it was easy to sneak past them and find the right cell. Yes, and with the keys and map in hand, we busted out Matthias and escaped through the catacombs. Mm. John, no, that's not what happened. Let me remember. It was dark. His cell smelt of decay and excrement. I remember calling for him, but Matthias did not answer, so I walked inside. He's dead. I saw a shape. It was moving just barely. I remember seeing his familiar yellow jacket now torn and covered in strange brown splotches. I saw his legs twisted at an impossible angle. Then someone called to me from the door. It was an officer. He didn't yell when he saw me, understood it at a glance. 
He took me outside, told me to forget what I saw. In a way, I did. Sherry, I... Come outside. We should take a photo of the cell. I know you want to remember the truth. Uh, I don't know if I do. To be honest. Does this... Okay, does it have to be the door closed? Fuck. Okay. Rest easy, there we Matthias. Go. John, I must find that loathsome mutton shunter Mitchell. I will find him. Mutton shunter. Where am I to find him? He's not the chief inspector anymore, so I presume he's retired. Police archives, yes, that seems fine. Mutton shunter. Okay, so, um, subjects, officers, districts, Galadio, and documentation. Yes. Chief Inspector Mitchell, after 30 years of exemplary service in the force, Chief Inspector Mitchell sadly passed away in his sleep last night. His family and friends will always remember his brilliant mind, attention to the detail, strict adherence to the word and spirit of the law, and kind heart. In his long and illustrious career, Chief Inspector closed dozens of high-profile cases, including the death of famous reporter Hector Jacobson in a mass shooting in Old City. That's... it's not fair. He deserved worse. And Matthias deserved better. There is a lot of injustice in the world, Sherry. Your skills could make oh, a difference for others like him. Hmm... Okay, I gotta go to the Chronicle for that, I assume. That's Old City. Um, that's over there, so... Now we can proceed northward. Um, let's take... Let's take a... Alright, we'll go to the Garden of Delights, and then we'll go north, and then we'll grab this coin, and then we'll grab that. I think it's time for a change of dress here. Worker's apron. The <laughs> ice cream hat. Very popular with workers. Do I really need to wear the ice cream hat? Apparently I need to wear the ice cream hat. And the stubble.
Uh, since I have to wear the ice cream hat, let's have John in his uh, own attire. And we're heading north. Uh huh. Boom. Boom, boom. Look out. Coming through. Coming through. I like the smacking noise. It's like I'm smacking them on the ass as I drove, as I ride by. Um, oh shit. Um, not right, this way. Over this bridge. Queen. Kind of expected it to be inside, but apparently it's not. Keep going, move along, move along. Oh, slow down. Hold your horses. Okay. So, oh, there it is. All soldiers need to unwind from time to time. Every good general knows that. Um, there's a place in Silverton inside an abandoned warehouse. Where soldiers come to gamble. This location is well known to both officers and soldiers. They call it the Black Goose Club. Okay. I have no idea where it could be. How am I supposed to know? Oh, this is Silverton. Is it, are these both Silverton? Oh, shit. Ah, gambling. Um, <clears throat> is there gambling? What is this place? Is that what... Is that what that is? Is the Garden of Delights the... Tavern, because that was also mentioned in the article about former Chief Inspector Mitchell, is that's where he was, and his uniform was there, and it was taken off, so I assumed it was a brothel or something, but could be a could be a casino as well. Let's at least go back and look. It's not that far away. What's the quickest way there? This way. Hey. A weird thrumming noise. Straight down here. This is definitely a red light district. There's literally red lights. And I don't see no abandoned warehouses here. Wonder if, oh, maybe I need to start asking around. Here, let's ask the prostitute. Help me, please. Sorry, I would like to help, but I know nothing. 
I think I need to ask soldiers. They would know where it is. He's not a soldier. Somebody in uniform. Um, is this familiar to you? Stick to your kind in the factory and get out of the way. I don't feel very oh, hungry. Okay. Who are you, by the way? Banian cutthroat. Um, Alright, so I need to change clothes. You said stick to your own kind in the factory. We don't want that. I want them to think that we are Navy Pipples. Hats only hurt us. Okay. Wow. It's hard to get a good Navy disguise, apparently. Back in your ice cream uniform. It's easier for me to spot you. Um, Alright, how about now, buddy? Help me, please. Didn't anybody teach you not to bother Ottomans? Um... All right, well, at least there's a different response then. I need to find a soldier. Ah. Hello there, fellow naval peoples. May I ask for your assistance? Ah, I know this, yeah. Let me help you. Club used to be in a warehouse on Granger Street, northeast from the crossing with Evernote. However, it was closed over in time. General Ridley allowed the local garrison a little more freedom in choosing their entertainment. Okay. Grange Street, northeast from the crossing with Evernote Street. In your street. So here? Here or across the bridge? Oh, wait, northeast. Ah, duh. Here. anything about this don't you think I have nothing better to do This fucking place. Ah, there it is. Strange paintings. Oh shit! Really? Ah, oh, I hate these. Okay. So this warehouse is not as abandoned as it was. I should have expected as much. Hello. Too simple. Dodge this. Ow. Hello, come on. What the fuck? Don't bother moving. 
you've lost. The snuff's ready. Not that oh, easy. We're in armor. We can overcome the brute now. No more crime for you until next month. Just die. Really not. It's all the same to you. Oh, don't cry, you'll live. Ow. I'm coming. Please don't. These are new shoes. <laughs> Give him the pepper snuff. Sure, I haven't actually used that against anybody. Hey, a successful attempt at pepper snuff. Don't bother moving. Can I be done? You've lost. No. Damn it. Ow. Okay. Seems unfair to stun lock, but all right. And okay, fuck it. Oh, you killed him. Yeah, I know. That was a choice. Hey, you could have kept him alive. Well, could have. Didn't. Him. Don't rush. I couldn't miss the party. That one I was trying to kill him. That was pure luck that I didn't. Too simple. The snuff's ready. Thank fucking god. That combat in this game is terrible. Right. Now. Back to the coin. Right. Um. Always been on black. Always been on black. Um. Old man lost it completely. I gathered loyal men and moved them to an abandoned warehouse in Silverton. We'll restart the operation from here. Need to get some time to regroup and recruit more men. I think it will start with Big Fish and Slimy Joe. They're always good to do business with. <clears throat> Maybe also Big Han. He was good with numbers. Antique coin in one of the chests. Looks like a sign of good luck. Wonder who lost it here. Okay, so what did you do with it? Oh, there it is. Cordonian Mangir, one of the last to be minted from local silver. The governor gifted this coin to Mycroft for his invaluable help. My brother added it to my collection, but the sight of it always made him frown. Okay. Well, that was... Considerably more trouble than I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be a quick stop. Not so. Alright. With no further ado. Side quest. Where's the bridge? There it is. I have no fast travel points, so... Can I steal a horse? No? Okay. Ow. Slap ass, slap ass, slap ass. Slap ass. Slap ass. Right, how far away am I? Long way to go. 
Slap ass. Oh. oh man, just one more. One more. Slap ass. Um, gentlemen. All right, get to the case, splitting the loot. Three men were killed in a quarrel over the distribution of bank robbery loot. The gunfight was reported at the uh, northern end of Silverton in a backyard on Engineers Lane between Evernote and Street and Cold Pit Street. Stolen property was not recovered. Case suspended due to inconclusive evidence. Roger Smiley, 42, previously arrested for theft. Was wearing glasses. Cause of death. Shotgun wounds to the torso. Bill Devon, 35. Cords all wrapped up there. Did that cut my mic? Am I good? All right, good enough. Um, okay, Bill Devon, 35, previously affiliated with the Red Scarves Gang, cause of death, blood loss from a severed jugular vein. Identity unknown, 30 years old, wearing a hat, suffering a leg wound, cause of death, point blank shot to the heart. Okay, so he had a pre-existing... He had a pre-existing... Wound to his leg. Okay. I assume this is the place. There we go. Police barrier. Not gun. Okay, we got the police numbers again. Evidence numbers. There's John. What the fuck is that banging? Stop that, I'm trying to concentrate over here. One. There's another one. Shotgun. It's number four. Five, six, okay. Start with one. Bottle, broken, one not broken. Table tipped, tipped forward, tipped for cover. There's a pistol back there. Two. A wagon. Let's see if tipped for cover. I don't see any bullet holes in it at all. Same with the wagon. Not much of a gunfight. Two. There's three. There's three. Blood drag marks leading to two. Come out the door. No bullet holes in the door. There's no bullet holes anywhere. Was a f shot fired? Anyway, come out the door. Took a shot. Fell. Dragged himself forward. There's not enough blood for that. That was where he stopped. That's where the most blood is. Um... Was that three? Okay, then four shotgun, two spent shells, sawed off, a little bit of blood. Okay. Five. Revolver, blood, no bullet holes. Six. Okay. Long use for cover? I don't know. Let's do the examination and see. Coins. I didn't see those. Huh. Some loot has been left behind. Whoever took it must have been in a hurry. Yeah, the loot was not recovered. Broken glass. 
Greed and booze got the better of them. No wonder it ended in violence. Okay. Ah, so there are bullet holes. Just can't see them when I'm not examining. Two bullets hit the cart. No traces of blood, though. Droplets of blood. Someone caught a bullet here. Yep. Shot here, stumbled back, landed here. Oh, there's a knife. The blade is very sharp. But also bloodless. Perfectly balanced for throwing. Really? The man with the shotgun fired only two shots. This seems he was too busy bleeding to reload. Terrific shotgun, though. Number five. Glasses. Bent glasses with cracked lenses. A brand new Colt, 45 caliber. That is not a 45 caliber Colt. It looks more like. Uh, well, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, I was gonna say Harrington, but it's not that either. The shooter fired three rounds. Okay. Three rounds, huh? Pieces of brass tacks. Piranha rounds. I mean, it looked like a small spread for a sawed-off shotgun. There's apparently more evidence I'm missing. Is there a seven? Interesting place to shoot one another. There's mess everywhere. Yeah, there is. I think we're looking for a knife. If it was a throwing knife. Hello there, officer. It's you again. Be sure not to miss any clues. Stark will piece them together, you'll see. Alright. Um, we're missing a clue, but... Six... Five... One... Two... Three... I only got all six. Loot couldn't have gone far. Review the evidence. Let's see what we got. Oh, the man with the shotgun only fired two shots.
brand new Colt, 45 caliber. Pieces of brass tacks, piranha rounds. Um, okay. Oh, there's the throwing knife. Stuck deep in the wood. Oh, shit. That's it. Okay, um. Somebody is here. There's blood, there's a gun. Also, a throwing knife, which came. I mean, it was somebody who threw them, hit somebody over here and over here. Yeah, they could have been standing over there. Guy with a shotgun definitely shooting in this direction. Gets off both shots. Somebody hiding behind the tree. The shooter here. There's. Bullet holes over there in the cart. So he's shooting over this way. And that's our guy with the glasses, which is. Says was wearing glasses. Shotgun wounds the torso. Okay, so yeah, that's Roger Smiley. Roger Smiley's back here with a revolver. He gets shot with the guy with the shotgun. Point blank shot to the heart. That's the one that's confusing me. Because if he's here with the shotgun, how does he get a point blank shot to the heart? Bill Devon. Blood loss from a severed jugular vein. He's the one who got hit with the throwing knife. But who threw that? Because from what I'm counting here, one, two, three, four people. We know who that is. I think I know who this is. We know who that guy is. Somebody got away with the loot. There was a fourth person. That's what it seems like to me. Let me review here. Log is riddled with brass tacks. See, that wouldn't be enough also to kill, I would think. Um, it's the point-blank shot. That doesn't make any sense. There's a fourth killer. There's There's got to be a fourth killer. There's no way you take a point-blank shot to the heart and still have enough wherewithal to go anywhere and shoot anyone with a shotgun. Let's get it started and see what happens. All right. This one I'm fairly certain I'll be able to figure out because guy with glasses. Okay. I have to be able to tell if he's wearing glasses. Okay, yes, he is wearing glasses. Okay, there's him. Okay, thankfully there's no thing here. Um, what does it say?
Um, okay, that one I'm not positive about. Let's see what we have here. That's our single point blank shot. Okay, this is the guy with the jugular. Um, Red Scarves Gang. No hat, no glasses. Okay, good. Just want to make sure. Alright, he's the guy who had his jugular severed. So we do have four people. Okay, well, it's the guy with the hat is the only one who's left. Um, he suffered a leg wound and he is holding his leg but he died from a point blank shot to the heart how do you get a point blank shot from that far away when everyone else is already dead and there's only three characters How does this happen? Did he fucking shoot himself? Alright, he had throwing knives. I know this because a throwing knife was found where the, where the body was and there was no blood on it. He was standing here throwing knives. One stuck into the tree. The other one hit its mark here. Killing the guy with the red scarf. He was pointed in this direction, firing at the other guy. So he kills him. He kills him. Who kills him? Is it somebody? No, that's not point blank. I was going to say, was it somebody over here who was shooting through the hole in the fence? But no, that's that's not point blank. Maybe somebody was watching on the other side of the fence and then came over and shot him after he was wounded? But, you know, the drag mark, you know, he got shot in the leg, he falls down, he pulls himself back. Alright, this is what happened, except it's not what happened. We're missing killer. The man with the shotgun was killed by a throwing knife to the neck. But not before firing at the man in glasses. The man in the hat took a bullet to his leg, but two other bullets missed. The report mentioned he was shot in the heart, but how? There's something I'm missing here. Who could have finished him off? Yeah, exactly. There's gotta be more evidence. It was a point blank shot. Somebody was standing here. Can't I look for footprints or. Uh... Oh. Oh, apparently I can. police boot print. So that's how it ended. Oh. 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 Do I know? I suppose I can't tell who it is from a boot print. Size 11, though, you say. Hmm. Excuse me, officer. I just arrived here this morning. I just arrived here this morning. Okay, so you're saying it's not you. Okay. S 
So, where can I... Do I have to go back to the police station to see who was there? Probably. Probably. He's even been... He's even been putting up posters, poor man. Losing it may be the death of him. I don't remember how to do this. He's even been putting up posters, poor man. Losing it may be the death of him. I don't... Shit. I forgot how to do those. He's evil. Okay. Don't let me stop you, come on. He's even been putting up posters, poor man. Losing it may be the death of him. He's even been putting up posters, poor man. Losing. How am I supposed to fucking know? How am I supposed to know what is relevant and irrelevant if it doesn't give me any information? I need information to make decisions. <laughs> He's even been putting up. Or is this just a case of trial and error? Okay. Cool, I guess. Hello, Stark the Clark. I visited the location where the three robbers killed each other over some stolen loot, but I wasn't the first to inspect the scene, was I? Um, no. Officer Schmidt arrived there first, just hours after it was reported. Poor Schmidt. That same day, he received news that his dear old grandmother in Austria had died. He had to leave for the funeral immediately. Yeah, I bet he did. <laughs> he is anything but poor. I doubt he'll be coming back. It was he who killed the last robber and took the loot for himself. Blasted. I knew he was acting suspiciously. He may be beyond our reach now, but I'll be sure to expose the little weasel when I write my report. Nice work. Uh -huh. Feel free to take another case. We make a great team, you and I. Yes, you're an invaluable member of the team. Alright, what do we got now? String theory. Uh, what was did in the shadows? Okay. Alright. Uh, two men were found dead near an open grave at the cemetery. Both victims had bite marks on their necks. Victims John Bowden, graveyard keeper, Saeed Hafez, assistant professor at Cordona Medical College. Suspects, Emil Arki, Tanner, Camille Arki, deceased, reportedly a vampire. Okay. Witnesses, Leandro Barbieri, reporter Joe Vagrant. Evidence points to the possible involvement of supernatural forces. Cases pending further investigation. 
Okay, Professor, it's a cut, slight cut to the leg, blunt force from the two puncture wounds in the neck, major vessels intact, blood loss is minimal. Cause of death, intracranial hemorrhage. John Bowden, 37, graveyard keeper, blunt force injury to the head, two puncture wounds in the neck, cause of death, massive blood loss from carotid artery. Okay, uh, Hamil Arki is the brother of the recently deceased Camille Arki. We tried to make him talk, but he's a hard nut to crack. His neighbor saw him leaving his house to put flowers on his sister's grave. They said he returned at dawn, looking dirty and tired. Just in case, we also made him eat garlic. No reaction. I was having my supper when Johnny came to dig another grave. As usual, there was someone else with him, too. I must have dozed off for a while, but when I woke, everything was a blur. Screaming, howling, flashes of lightning, but no thunder. Some devilry was at work. Came out to see what was happening, and there was this reporter, Leonard or something... He told me that a vampire had killed two people mere yards from me. Boy, am I lucky to be alive. I've always had a nose for a good story. I was strolling about the cemetery when I saw him, the necromancer. I'm not joking. He raised a woman from the grave in order to attack two men who were close by. They then both turned into bats and flew away. I was too scared to take photographs of them, but I photographed their victims. This will be a front pager. Okay. So that will be over at the cemetery, but that is going to be it for today. So next time, maybe we'll go digging around in the cemetery and um, see about buying more furniture. It seems like the main quest is locked behind furniture. So that'll be what we do. All right. Take care. See you. Have a good day.